Okay, so I'm going to do the last demonstration now. Uh, I want to show you the new mapping features in Leap. Um, so Leap has for a long time allowed you to examine the annual average environmental loadings associated with your model, uh, including how those emissions might change over time as different sectors grow or different technologies and different policy measures are implemented. Um, and this is done using uh, the emission factors in LEAP, uh, which are specified uh, for different pollutants and for each technology uh, within the branch structure in LEAP. And we can see a couple of examples of that down here, um, a very simple example. So here, for example, we might have emission factors for a uh, natural gas cook stove. We specified a, a whole uh, bunch of different factors, both for greenhouse gases, local air pollutants uh, and also short-lived climate pollutants. You can put all of those emission factors into LEAP. But LEAP 2020 goes further uh, by allowing you to specify not just the annual average um, emission factors, but also the distribution of those uh, emission factors geographically. Um, and it also allows you to explore how, that, how those geographic distributions might change over time. Um, as, as things change in your scenario, as different sectors grow, but also as you pursue different policies. And in, as well as calculating those uh, emissions distributions, LEAP 2020 also lets you view the results on uh, GIS-based maps. Um, so our hope is that this new feature will be useful in helping to identify uh, uh, emerging emission hotspots as well as for tracking and monitoring progress on reducing the emissions burdens faced by different communities. So that's becoming an increasingly important topic as issues of environmental justice are discussed in the debate about um, planning sustainability transitions. Um, so let me show, I'm gonna show you some of those new elements now, but before I do that, let me just say a lot of the way that we've implemented these new features in Leap, they draw very heavily on a fairly amazing uh, uh, open source GIS component called MapWin GIS, uh, which is available from mapwindow.org. Um, so I just want to do a special thanks to the developer of Map. Mapwin GIS, Paul Memes, who gave me a great deal of assistance in implementing these features in Leap. So let's have, have a look at how that works in Leap. And we're gonna start by looking at how to set up maps. So the first thing you need to do is to download and install the separate Mapwin GIS components. We will be providing links to those on the Leap website once Leap 2020 is launched in the next day or so. And once installed, Leap should recognize MapWin GIS automatically. You don't have to do anything else. If you want to check to make sure that it's correctly installed, you can look at the About screen in Leap and look for the entry that says MapWin GIS. So you can see here on my machine, it is installed correctly. That's all I have to do. I don't have to do any special things in Leap to connect up to it. And now let's, so now let's look at how we set up the maps we're going to use in Leap. Um, let's see, where am I? Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go back to the settings screen and enable the mapping feature. Um, so previously in Leap, you could use maps, but they were restricted only to multi-regional data sets. Uh, but the new version of Leap will support mapping both, uh, both in multi-regional and single region data sets. This particular one I'm gonna show you here is a multi-region data set but we're gonna use this new feature to map results to a grid. Um, so that's the first thing we need to do is just simply enable that checkbox and then we can come over here and look at the mapping feature in Leap. Um, and the, the mapping settings here are where we specify the name of a shape file. So a shape file is a standard um, GIS data file that can be used in all sorts of different um, GIS software. Um, there's some very good open source GIS, GIS software out there that you can use in conjunction with Leap. There's um, a package called QGIS, which is particularly good and free. Um, so here you're gonna select a shape file that contains the outlines of, e of the the countries that you're modeling in your data set. So here I've got this particular shape file is just uh, a shape file containing outlines of every country in the world. 
the labels are just the names of the of the countries. So that's a field within the the shape file. You can also specify a background image layer. Although Leap will also um, create background images automatically by pulling them in from as uh, tiled images from the um, internet in much the same way as things like Google Maps do. And then finally, you need to specify the resolution of the gridding that you're going to do in your calculations and that you want to show in your map. So here I've specified 0.1 by 0.1 degrees, which is sort of fa fairly small, um, um, but works well for a small to medium country. Um, the smaller the size of the, the grid cell, the more memory will be required. So I would advise not going too small. Um, and also, I'd probably advise using the 64-bit version of Leap, uh, which can handle much larger uh, uh, models and has much more memory available to it. Okay, so that's how we uh, set up the shapefile to be used with our mapping. This particular data set, again, is a multi-regional data set. And first of all, just a, um, a word of warning, even though it's set up to have three regions which are named as three countries, the data I'm going to show you here is, uh, is completely fictitious. This is not data for Bangladesh, Bhutan, and Nepal. I'm just, I've just chosen those three at random just as a way of showing you some results on a, on a map file. But this is in no way should be interpreted as results for those countries. Um, OK, so the next step then is we go to the region screen. And here we have our three regions in our LEAP model, Bangladesh, Bhutan, and Nepal. And over here on the right, we simply map each of those to a shape in the shape file. So the shape file you can see has basically every country in it. And I've just m matched up the names of the regions to the names in the shape file. So that creates the outlines that's going to be the base, the outlines of the countries that are going to be the basis for the mapping that we're doing. The next step is that we go to this brand new screen called the geographic mapping screen. So that's under the general menu. This is a brand new screen in Leap 2020. And on this screen, what you're going to be doing is creating a set of different uh, GIS uh, data files that contain socioeconomic data that you think are reasonable our reasonable basis for allocating the uh, emissions in your data set. So in this particular example, what I'm going to be doing, for, exam uh, for example, is taking the emissions coming from the household sector and allocating those within grid squares within each country. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say my emissions in are, are proportional to how many people live in each grid square. So my household emissions, I think, are proportional to the number of people. Similarly, I'm going to say my emissions from my transport sector are in proportion to the number of kilometers of road in each of the grid squares. So I think that's sort of a reasonable proxy variable that for simulating what the emissions might be. So again, we're only talking here about emissions. This current version of LEAP does not go beyond emissions. It's not going to, um, it's not going to allow you to model concentrations or impacts. Um, LEAP IBC, a separate model, module within LEAP does do that, but at the moment, those two things are not connected. That's in the future, we hope to do that kind of thing. But for now, we're, we're only allowing you to do emissions with this feature. OK, so here I've got two different um, TIFF files. These are, my, these are my proxy data sets. And these kinds of files are available very freely on the internet. And if you click on the help file here, it'll actually list some common sources of, of, um, of um, uh, places where you can download these kinds of files. Um, here, for example, we've listed some examples of where you can go to get those kinds of TIFF files that contain these proxy socio socioeconomic data sets. These data sets don't have to be the same resolution as each other. So you can see here, one of them is point, point 0.1, one of them is point zero 0.04. Leap will take those data sets and it will rescale them to a, to a common scaling factor, the point 0.1 by point 0.1 that I chose. And th then it will have a common basis for allocating the emissions to grid squares as it does its cal calculations. The only thing is each of these TIFF files must cover all of the area that you're modeling in your LEAP model. So in this case, both of those data sets are global data sets. So they cover all of the countries that I'm interested in. Okay, once you've 
put in a set of data, uh, a, a set of data files, these proxy data files, you can use the, the regenerate button up here to build this sort of common, um, uh, common set of, um, of mappings that will be used as the basis for leaps calculations. I won't do that now because it doesn't require it. So here I've basically got two data sets, roads and population. Once you've done that, you then need to connect those up to your LEAP model to show how to, to do the allocation of the emissions. So down here you can see, for example, I'm under the household sector. I'm looking at natural gas stoves. I've already specified my emission factors under environmental loadings, but LEAP 2020 now has this new variable called geography. And that's the place where I'm going to allocate those emissions to grid squares. So here I'm allocating my household emissions on the basis of population. And it's using, you know, lot, here are these different data sets I just created. So this one it's doing on the basis of population. But if I come down here under transport, and look at my cars, you can see my cars are being allocated on the basis of that roads data set. So you could have lots of different proxy data sets and you could allocate different emissions in different sectors in different ways. And in fact, if I go down to transformation and look at electric generation, down here somewhere, you can see here my geography variable is actually allocating things, just specifying these are point sources. So if you had a data set that had each individual power plant, you could simply put in the latitude and longitude of those power plants and it would allocate those emissions to the grid square within which that latitude and longitude resided. Okay, so that's the way you allocate the emissions in the data set. Once you hit calculate, LEAP's going to do its normal calculations, but it's also going to do an additional step where it allocates your total emissions out to each of the individual squares and those allocations might be different in different years and they might be different in different scenarios depending on the policies you pursue. So let's have a look at some results. Ah, so it needs to calculate this one. I'm not I'm just gonna see if I've got ones already calculated. Just to save a bit of time here. Okay, so now we get to look at some results. And here you can see, um, you know, in, we're in the results view in LEAP. We can look at our regular results just as we've done before. So here, for example, we're looking at the results by region for these, for our, the three regions of our model. And again, let me just emphasize, these are not real results. These are just sample results at this point. Um, we can look at um, different kinds of pollutants, um, or we can go, uh, but now we have the option to go and choose a new kind of chart that's a gridded map chart. So let me do that. Oh, hang on, let's go to the favorite. Uh, map chart, here we go. And you can see here now it's showing you the, the results uh, in the form of a map. And you can see the little blocks, each block corresponds to a, um, a square. Those are the cell sizes that we specified earlier. So the, the, these are the total emissions allocated out to the squares within the model. And you can see, uh, you know, the, there's quite a lot of variation depending on where the people are living, where the roads are, where the power plants are. It will actually show you different uh, levels of emissions. There's a, this works much like, it's a sort of simple version of a G, GIS software, and it works much like that. You have options for changing the colors, for changing the number of divisions, for changing where the background map comes from. Here, for example, I'm using the Bing hybrid maps, which is Microsoft's um, uh, mapping component. You can also use other ones. For example, there's the open humanitarian maps. It will pull those maps in uh, over the internet on the fly. You don't have to download them or anything like that. You can change in the number of divisions or you can even change the basis on which it calculates the different divisions. So this here I'm showing equal count. We can do linear log and reverse log. Um, one particularly nice feature is to actually see what's going on within each grid square. So if I change this to a split view, here now you can see 
both the map, but also you can see the numbers corresponding to each individual um, cell on the map. And if I hold down the control key and hover over the map, it'll actually navigate within the table of values. And I can see there's one real peak value up here. Let's see what's going on up at this point. Let's see if I can find that peak. Let me zoom in a bit so I can find it. So let's see if I can find that particular grid. So where was it there? Some, there's some very high numbers up here. And as we click on the different tables in the cell, it'll actually show you the trends within that one particular grid cell. So here you can see there's one point that's massively higher than the other points. So that's probably a cell that actually contains a power plant. And you can see the trends over time, the different scenarios for that particular grid cell. So there you go, that's just um, some of the things you can do with mapping. We're only just beginning to explore the kinds of things you can do with it, but I hope people will find that useful. Um, I'm particularly hopeful it will be a useful way of making um, development pathways much more relevant to individual communities and sort of enhancing discussions about what environmental justice means in terms of sustainable development pathways. Okay, so that's the mapping view. Um, so what we're going to do now is uh, I just want to do a couple more slides just to talk you through some of the things that we haven't had a chance to mention. We haven't had a chance to show you all of the features. Um, so let's just mention some of those now. This one here. Okay. So there are also some other very important developments in LEAP 2020. Um, in particular, one thing I haven't had a chance to show you today because of lack of time is uh, some big enhancements to uh, the modeling of uh, air pollution impacts. So in, in particular, we now have the capability for looking at both indoor pollution and uh, ambient or outdoor pollution, as it's more properly called. Um, so LEAP has a new methodology based on the HAPIT tool, which was developed um, uh, by the uh, a, a Clean Cooking Alliance. Um, that that's allows you to look at the impacts of different cooking practices on the health of different members of society, whether it's uh, the, the women who are predominantly cooking in, in most societies or, or, ch or other adults and children. Our IBC model, which is the integrated benefits calculator, which is a tool for looking at the health and ecosystem impact of ambient air pollution has also been enhanced. That now allows you to look at results disaggregated by age and gender, um, which can be a very useful way of really bringing out some of the sustainable development uh, um, benefits of uh, different energy policies. And it's been closely integrated with the uh, air pollution modeling um, aspects of LEAP 2020 as well. So um, integrated within the tool are ways of making sure that you're not double counting the impacts of uh, indoor versus outdoor air pollution because the two are very closely related. Um, aside from these new capabilities, we have also put a lot of work into LEAP to make to improve its usability and overall to improve the, the quality and the robustness of the tool. So even if you're not using some of these new features, we hope that you'll find LEAP 2020 to be easier to use and also much more robust uh, in everyday work. Finally, let me just say a, a few quick words about what's coming next and what we're planning over the next year or so. Um, so a, a, a big effort of work over the next year is to develop um, a new plug-in architecture for LEAP, um, which will support a more module approach to the development of models. So at the moment, um, you know, myself in particular and other people at, at SEI can sometimes be the sort of bottlenecks in LEAP development. We're aiming to change the architecture of LEAP to support sort of more of a plug-in or modular architecture that should allow m many more people to get involved in developing capabilities within LEAP. So that's the focus of this year. We're also working on how to make LEAP much more useful to people who are using it in teams. So increasingly people are doing that. In the past, people tend to use it individually, but now a lot of people, particularly those doing NDC development, are, are trying to use LEAP in teams and we're tr are gonna be enhancing it to make that much more um, easy to do. 
Jason's already mentioned some of the um, enhancements going on in NEMO. So for example, allowing uh, NEMO to be used for energy system optimization, allowing it to be used for uh, network and power flow analysis. Those things are going to be sort of prototyped in NEMO and then we are intending to bring those things into LEAP to make them more sort of broadly uh, usable by a wider group of people. And then finally, I should just mention that we, the SEI does have a new, a major new initiative on integrated climate and development planning. And through that initiative, we're trying to make use of, uh, we're trying to improve LEAP to make it much better able to uh, say things about macroeconomic and development implications of energy scenarios. So make it uh, much useful, much more useful for those trying to conduct uh, strategic planning of how to achieve the sustainable development goals, for example. So those are all things that will be a focus of our development over the next year or so.